What's up? It's your boy Lo, and you know who? The Drew Jones. Oh, please, Drew. Drew, whatever. You know what? <laughs> so what's good? We haven't been here in a while, but I now know, we're back. I know, but it has, but guess who's back? We're back. back That's again. right. Back again. Tag mm-hmm. team. Back again. Drew, you know, it's been a while since we did something. What do we got in store for our viewers and our listeners today? Well, so we talked a lot about your experience playing for the New Orleans Saints, yeah. and you know, you've had such a long decorated career, so I wanted to get into, yeah, yeah, you know, put the team on your back. Um, I wanted to get into your experience transitioning from New Orleans, the Deep South, to playing for the New York Jets. So, you know, what was the transition like culture-wise? You know, the weather, I'm sure, was a shock. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of New York? Wow, Drew, that's, that's awesome. Let's go down memory lane. Saints were great for years, and then I was a free agent, hit the market, and went to New York. And I remember signing with New York, and I was like, okay, fly me to the moon, let me go to New York. Everyone talks about the Big Apple. Mm-hmm. And it was just, for me, the experience was so different. Me coming from Lamore, California, going to Fresno State, which is still a small school, only three, four hundred thousand people the at the time. Of California. Easy, easy, Drew. <laughs> See, this is how Drew, yeah, okay, Drew, okay. There you go, just beat me up as usual. Like, I'll kick you while you're down. I know, exactly. <laughs> And yeah, it's it's a small. It is. And it's it's not. You know, it's not L.A. It's not San Francisco. Right. But anyway, right anyway, New Orleans was. It's really weird going to New Orleans because you know it's the deep south, the right. red beans and rice, all the freaking fried and food, the it was the seafood. Yeah. It was a different experience. Everyone you say, they would answer your question for you. Like, you want to come to my house? Yeah. You want to come to my house for dinner? Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, let me say yeah. Right. You, you I'll want, say they're yeah. Like, they're like, they're like, well, you want some gum? Yeah. They're like, you want some gum? Yeah. Like, you're like, can I have some gum? Uh-huh. Like, I'm going to go make groceries. You're going to go make, make groceries? groceries? Yeah. So, New Orleans was really great, great people. But then came a free agent and I went to the Jets. I wanted, I, I remembered that experience flying into New York and being able to see the Statue of Liberty, the lady, and, and flying in that town. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in New York. And uh, the city experience, it was neat, it was fun early, and then it just kind of, it's a, it's a concrete jungle. People moving at a fast pace and you're oh, there yeah. and you know. City that never sleeps, it right? never sleeps the subway and I was like, oh my god, you know, never had a subway where I'm from. And uh, I ended up buying a house. I said, I wanted to get out of this that way. So I moved out way out into the Hamptons, out where right by the Hamptons. Oh, the Hamptons. Well, I'm not, not in the, not in the Hamptons, <laughs> the, the outskirts. You know, the outskirts. I'm trying to I'm trying to act like I was balling. I wasn't balling in that. Way, but I mean I mean you're playing professional football, you're kind yeah, of balling. I got a couple quarters or two. Right. But I was out in Baiting, I was out in Baiting Hollow, so you'd have to take a course. I was in Baiting Hollow, Riverhead, out that way in the LA, and I didn't know so many beautiful vineyards and wineries. Mm-hmm. It's really got some beautiful countryside oh, yeah. in New York. Um so it was there, and then we practiced, our practice facility was in Hempstead. So we practiced at Hofstra University. Mm-hmm. That's where training camp, and that's where we practice at. And is that like in relation to like Manhattan, like Northern? It, it, would, it would actually, it would, Western. I, I'm not going to, you ain't gonna give me the lie. You ain't gonna give me the lie, Drew. I just know that it's it's not, it's not in the, it's not in New York City. It's out, outskirts of New York. So okay. it's not, so it's about 20 minutes, you still have to go, over the bridge or through the tunnel right. to get to New York. So Hempstead and Hofstra is a little bit further, about 15, 20 minutes from the city. Mm-hmm. And then I lived an additional 30 minutes out on the LIE mm-hmm. toward Baden Hollow and Riverhead. So it was really, really just different and kind of a neat experience. New York is kind of like, I would say, San Francisco in a sense that you kind of go out of over a bridge or go underneath because right. it's kind of, you know, the, kind of the rock. Yeah. Um, so it was just, it was just different. I enjoyed it. Short term, but I didn't. It wasn't a place that I would just like consider that I would retire there. But right. I really enjoyed well, tell me about that the time. weather. The weather. It would get the summers was beautiful because you know you, you sign and it's you know it's uh, you know free agents start in February, so you sign, you go there, and then training camp in hot July and you know August right. is hot. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, and then the winter time comes, <laughs> and you're like freezing. You're like, oh my god, I didn't know it gets so cold. So a guy coming from California going to New York where it snows right. and all that stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea, but enjoyed it. It was really neat. I enjoyed the town from my experience there. It wasn't something I would just be, say that I could just want to live there forever, but it was a pretty neat experience. And pretty you neat. actually played, you know, contrary to popular belief, you didn't actually play the games in New York, right? You're, right. you know, going on down in New Jersey. So it was, you know, the traffic like and. Yeah, tra- traffic was, 
Tampa was always difficult. And then, uh, you know, we would, you know, you'd stay usually in the hotel the night before. So the coach wanted us, the team always put us there. And of course, our coach at that time uh, was Bill Parcells, AKA the Tuna, Vic Tuna. So being able to play for Bill Parcells, a legend, a guy that I wanted to play for, a guy that looked up to, and he remember oh, he was with the Giants, they win Super Bowls, and you knew the kind of coach that he was, and the kind of coach he, uh, you know, coach he was, no longer coaches, but just a great, tough guy. Guy that you know that loved his horses, always talking about hucking and bucking, he raced horses, he owned his own horses. So being able to play for Bill Parcells, one of the legendary coaches was unbelievable. Was such was such a an honor to play for him and play with so many guys. I think our quarterback at that time was Neil O'Donnell. Being able to play with him, Age Morrell was the running back, and that was the, that was that start of that blocking for 11 straight seasons with a thousand yard rusher. Age Morrell was the first guy that was that I what I did did that for and helped get him a thousand yards. So it was really really fun. Playing in New York, still talk to Neil O'Donnell, still talk to H. Morrell, still talk to some of the guys that I played for, who played with Hugh Douglas. Still, he comes on our show 95.7 The Game, so still uh, kind of interact with some of those guys. Um, a guy that passed actually a couple weeks ago, was really sorry, uh, Reggie Reggie Cobb um, played with was a running back, also was a, a scout for the San Francisco 49ers, no longer here. So just going down memory lane, thinking about just the people, the experiences, people that are no longer here, sometimes it make you well. You look at life too, like this whole perspective of man, even though we were kind of giants or, or warriors in our field, you just, you just get away from the game and you see that we're still human. And Absolutely. Our brothers are, are passing. So mm -hmm. shout out Reggie, rest in peace and uh, thoughts and prayers with you and your family. Let me, uh, you know, take you back just a little bit. So you mentioned that Bill Parcells is Nickname was the tuna. The tuna. And is, do you know why his nickname was the tuna? It's crazy. I'm glad you asked that because I think I got to do some research and maybe go to Google and ask <laughs> Wikipedia. You know, Wikipedia and say, hey, why do they call him the big tuna? It, it's just he was kind of bigger than life and he had that mystique. He, you know, they call him the big tuna because he was the man. I mean, Bill Parcells, great coach, defensive minded kind of guy, guy who was always at the forefront of coaching and always innovative, always had tough physical teams, and he was a big man in stature. Um, Bill Parcells was great. Also, my coach, the defensive coordinator at the time was none other than Bill Belichick, you know, New England Patriots head coach now. So I, I, I've been fortunate, I was very, very lucky to have both those guys were my coach. So how much did they yell at you? Every day. <laughs> it, 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 it's like when you Bill yell at you, like the Lord's yelling at you, like, oh God, what did I do? But you know, it, it always made you better because you knew that they were going to demand excellence. You knew that they wanted guys that knew what they were doing, guys that were smart guys, guys that were buttoned up. It was really, really a privilege and an honor to play for the New York Jets and Bill Parcells and our, that organization. It was fun. It was a really, really neat experience. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed your story. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks for answering some of the questions. And then, you know, next video will be about the next team that you played for. Can't wait to talk about that. <laughs> Boom.